Hi everyone, welcome to week two of iOS programming for sport. This week we're going to be looking at primitive data types, making decisions, looping, and then finally creating our own class and looking at instances of classes. So if we fire up Xcode and we want to create a new project, this week we're just going to focus on a single view application. So select that and then call it anything you want. Make sure the iPhone is selected and use automatic reference counting. And you can save that wherever you want. Okay, so uh, if we go to viewcontroller.h and uh, what we're going to do, start off with, is looking at um, some basic data types and manipulation of numbers. So um, actually we want to go to viewcontroller.m and find the view did load method. And in here we're going to be doing our coding. So give yourself some space. And as we started to do last week, um, we looked at integer variables. So we're going to start at that point again and look at how we can uh, do some mathematical operations and then put those mathematical operations into a label. Okay, so as we did last week, we declined, we declared an integer variable. So we'll do that again and we'll give it a name and this time we will assign a value to it. We'll do a second one and we'll assign the number 5 to that. So integer values are whole numbers but what if we want a number with a decimal point? Well we have another variable type called a float and that will allow us to declare numbers with decimal points. So we'll do number, whoops, we'll declare number four and like that. So now we can perform mathematical operations on those numbers. So we could declare another integer value called sum and add number one to number two by simply calling number one plus number two. Now the advantage of doing that is if the assignment of this value here and here is dynamic in the sense that you could have a, a slider on the screen and that value changes depending on what the user inputs. So rather than having a static value that is always the same and therefore putting 2 plus 5 in here, if these integers are connected up to a user interface then no matter what this value is from the slider you will always be able to add these two numbers up. So whatever is passed into here it won't break this line of code. Okay. So we can not only add numbers together, but we can multiply. So we could say number one multiplied by number two. And you'll notice that the multiplication sign is a star. and we could do minus equals number one minus number two now when it comes time to division division is a, a sort of a special case because here we're dealing with whole numbers now it's fine if we did int divide equals 
10 divided by 2. And of course, that would equal a whole number, 5. But if we were to do this, 10 divided by 3, that would result in a floating point number with a decimal point. But we are assigning that into an integer value. So in this case, rather than the result being 3.3, .3, it would end up being 3 because uh, we can only have a whole number in here. And so the uh, decimal places it will be rounded. Okay, so you need to be aware of that. So if we wanted to do this, we would need to declare this as a float here. Float, divide, and then that will allow this value here to have decimal places. So we could do number 3 divided by number 4 because these two variables are already floating point values. So number 3 divided by number 4 into a floating point number. Okay. So we'll save that. Now what we want to do is uh, we want to show the end result of these calculations in a label. So like we did last week, we need to choose our interface file, drag out a label, and let's center it. Make it a bit bigger. Make it bold. Okay, and then we need to connect this label up with our code. So control, click, drag, and we define it as an outlet. Let's just call it my label. Keep that at strong, hit the connect button. Okay, so we can hop over to the m.m file. So now in here, we can do self.mylabel.text equals. Now last week we introduced uh, a method uh, from the NS string class, which was NS string string with format. So we'll use the same method. And to start with, we will say the sum of number one and number two equals percent i and then our sum variable so whatever is in here which is the addition of number one and number two will be placed here these warnings here are simply that we haven't used these variables yet Okay. So if we run that, and there we have it. The sum of number one and number two equals seven. Okay, so sum of two and five equals seven. So that's working. Well, let's try the multiplication now. So if we said the multiplication of number one and number two equals percent i, so it's still a multiply is still an integer so we use percent i but we need to change this to 
multiply. So now we have number 1 times number 2, so 2 times 5. 10 is stored in multiply, so the multiplication of number 1 and number 2 equals 10. Now what if we wanted, just move these out of the road, so we get a single line here. So what if we wanted to actually put the correct number here, so rather than the variable name, what if we wanted to put the actual value? Well all we have to do is replace number 1 because it's an integer with percent i number two with percent i and then the order of these should match up with the order of the variables so the first variable variable we want is number one so we can choose number one there and then a comma and then the second integer variable that we want which is number two select number two and then finally the third integer variable we want is this one here so let's just change that to actually no we'll, we'll keep it at uh, multiply for now save that and run So now we have the multiplication of 2. Okay, it's putting the value of this into here. 2 and 5. Okay. So the multiplication of 2 and 5 equals 10. And if we wanted to do the subtraction of Let's say number two, number one, and we need minus so the subtraction of five and two equals minus three. So five from it's doing five from two. Okay. We should be able to get the, the idea there. So that's quite handy to be able to dynamically input the actual values from these variables into this string here. Okay, so that's how you can take primitive values, primitive data types like integer and float, assign them a value, do some mathematical operations on them and then the result of those mathematical operations you can put into a label on the screen and then format the label with this method here called string with format to enable you to insert the actual values and of course the end result into that string and then uh, display that on the screen. So that's primitive data types so I'll get rid of these that I haven't used, just to get rid of the errors. Actually, one last thing that I'll, I'll do is uh, we'll, we'll look at these floating point numbers. So we might add these two together. So let's create another one. Uh, int sum 2 equals sorry that needs to be a float doesn't it float sum 2 equals number 3 which is a float plus number 4 okay okay so we used percent i for integer so if we want to display a float we need to do percent f so let's do that percent F